Hey everybody, welcome back to Studio Zero. I'm Mr. Dennis, and today we are going to talk about one point perspective. So, um, specifically, we're going to be doing a one point perspective interior. Um, before we do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about where perspective came from, um, its history, what it can be used for, and then we'll get into the drawing exercise. So, linear perspective, as it's called, um, was actually discovered in 1415 by a guy named Filippo Brunelleschi. Uh, he was an architect. He, uh, like a lot of other artists during the beginning of the Renaissance era, was trying to find a better way to draw those buildings and his ideas. And so he uh, was sitting there and trying to draw this building and realized that there was actually a vanishing point. And that vanishing point then allowed him to do a better job of illustrating what he saw in front of him and also the ideas that he had. So, um, it ended up falling into the hands of artists, architects, all kinds of people who were designing things. And that's where we talk about what the, what the uses of perspective are. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that you can use perspective. Uh, you can use it for interior design, architecture, engineering, civil engineering, art, set design, automotive design. Um, there are a million things that you can use perspective for. It doesn't always have to be done with a ruler. Um, a lot of people think that it has to be this very uptight way of drawing, and it can be. Um, a lot of the time when you're learning it, it needs to be. Uh, the bigger idea is actually understanding the concepts that go with perspective, and that's often how I teach it. Now, today I'm not going to teach specifically that way. I'm going to get into more of a monkey see, monkey do situation where I draw and then you try to draw what I draw. Um, but I'm going to also be making some videos that go back to the roots of here are how you do the basics and level up step by step to where you can use the idea of perspective to do anything that you want. So, like I said, today we're going to focus on an interior one-point perspective drawing the inside of a room. Let's get to it. And here we go. Basic materials. we got a pencil. We have an eraser, sharpener, and a ruler. Um, any kind of straight edge will work. If you have one of those plastic triangles, anything like that, those work great. So, with any of this, we have to have some kind of vanishing point to start with. Um, in this case, we're going to go somewhere near the center. It doesn't have to be dead center or anything like that. Um, we are doing the interior of a room. Um, like I said before, I really like to do some other basic things so people can understand the concepts. But for the purpose of instruction, um, we're going to get to this a little bit quicker than some of the other things. Now, as I'm looking at this, I need to imagine that that vanishing point is where everything goes off into the distance and finally vanishes into that distance. Now, I might have a really light horizon line, although I'm not going to need the horizon line because this is not an exterior drawing. Um, I would need that if I was drawing outside, the classic railroad tracks or road that are go that's going off in the distance with buildings on the sides um, that a lot of art teachers do. In this case, we're doing an interior. So what I need is I need the far wall. So to create that far wall, I am going to start with just a rectangle on the piece of paper. That is going to represent the wall that I am looking at. That dot off in the distance, the vanishing point is actually a representation of where I'm sitting in the room. This tells me that I'm sitting slightly to the right um, with my eye level right about halfway in between where the ceiling and the floor is. Um, now, there's some basic rules of perspective. Okay? Some basic rules. A lot of things are going to be horizontal. A lot of things are going to be vertical. A lot of things are going to be orthogonal. Which means they're going to go off into an angle that meet that vanishing point. And then there are also going to be things that are parallel. All of those things are rules that you should be keeping in mind, uh, that I teach my students, um, that will help you know what to make lines when. Okay, so I've already done some vertical lines, some horizontal lines, I need to get some more orthogonal lines to start to create my wall and my ceiling and my other wall and my floor. Okay, so let's get busy with that. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my ruler to line up my vanishing point 
with the corner of that wall. I often put my pencil where I want to draw from, line up my ruler with the vanishing point back over here, and then I'm going to draw away from my vanishing point. I'm going to do the same thing up here, start to create the wall and the ceiling. I'm going to put my pencil there to make sure that I get it right where it's supposed to be. Make sure I can still see my vanishing point just a little bit, and I'm going to draw off into the distance. Okay, so I've started to create the left wall of my room. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Vanishing point, corner, and I'm going to draw away. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on this last one. I'm going to draw this right here. Okay, now, one thing that is a common mistake that I want to make sure that everyone notices is my lines that I just drew those orthogonal lines do not go to the corner of my paper. You might happen to get lucky and they might, a couple of them may go to the corner by accident. But if they all four go to the corner, I start to worry that you probably did not really line it up with your vanishing point. That's a very common mistake. Okay, And it looks close to right, but it technically isn't. So, um, in this case, all of these lines come directly from my vanishing point. So now I have a ceiling, a floor a left wall, and a right wall, okay? Um, now, each one of these things was created from that vanishing point. So, anything on the floor, um, I used a horizontal line and some orthogonal lines. So if I started to want to create a checkerboard floor or a tile floor, I would have my lines all radiate from my vanishing point. Now you notice I'm not using my ruler, but I'm drawing some pretty straight lines to give you the basic idea. I would have to come back in and erase all of these lines right here because we wouldn't need those, okay? But that gives you a quick idea of how the floor is getting gradually bigger as it comes closer to me. If I started to cut those off parallel to the floor, remember we had that rule of parallel, I could start to create kind of a checkerboard pattern, tile. If I made these lines really close together, I could make it look like hardwood. Whatever you want it to be, okay? In this case, I'm gonna focus on something that looks kind of like a bedroom. Uh, maybe put some posters on the wall, maybe put a flat screen on there, put a couple windows in, probably throw a ceiling fan up there. Um, I want you to also realize I am not being quite as technical as what I could be. Um, when I drew these lines, I didn't sit there and line up my ruler, although I could. I'm going to draw them a little bit darker now that I know approximately where they're going to be. But I also have to realize I'm going to put some furniture out on this, which means I'm going to probably have to erase some of this floor, okay? Because that furniture would be on top of the floor, okay? Things to keep in mind. A couple of things that I'm going to mention really fast, okay? Some people have a really light, hard time drawing lightly, okay? There's a couple of things that you can do to solve that. One of them is don't grip your pencil so tight. Be looser with your grip. Also, if you hold your pencil farther away from the tip, it means you can't put as much pressure on the tip of it and allows you to draw lighter. So just by changing your grip location and intensity, you can change a lot of what happens with your pencil, which will allow you to draw lighter and get rid of lines that you don't wanna keep as you draw other things, okay? It's especially important with perspective to get some layout done and then be prepared to erase a couple of things to make room for the other things that you're going to add. So I've got kind of a checkerboard floor in here. I could start to shade this stuff in. Um, I could start to, you know, I could make a, a hole in the floor if I really wanted to. Maybe we'll do that as we go, okay? I'm gonna put a window over here. Now, in order to do this wall, I had uh, an orthogonal line on the top and on the bottom, which means the window is gonna have one on the top and on the bottom, and it's gonna have two vertical lines because the wall has a vertical line. So, here I go. I'm gonna do two windows over here. So I'm gonna do one here and one here. That's gonna be the top of the two windows. All right, we're gonna do one pretty low right here. Okay, it's gonna be actually straight horizontal. So I'm gonna do one here, and I'm gonna do one here. Now I'm gonna to need to connect those. I may have some extra stuff. Another really common thing that happens is sometimes people let their ruler lean when they're supposed to be doing a vertical line. Make sure that you keep your lines 
vertical. One way that I do that is I look at what the edge of my paper is. The edge of my paper is always going to be vertical. The bottom and top of my paper are always going to be horizontal. So if my ruler is parallel to that, that helps make sure that I am either perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal. So now I'm drawing the uprights of these. Again, I could be more technical. When I did the grid on the floor, you can actually run an angle through these to make sure that they're the right distance as they come closer to you. I'm not going to quite get that fancy today. Um, maybe on one of the other future videos I will. So these two windows right here, I could do some other fancy stuff to them and add depth to them. Um, I could actually add a line right here and then one down. And then do another orthogonal for my vanishing point to create the inside or the upper edge of that. I could put trim around these. I could do all kinds of stuff to them um, to make them appear to have depth. I could do some shading in here. I could show what's outside. I could show the trees that are outside in this part of it right here. This would be the depth of the window instead. Once again, orthogonal coming from here to create that part right there. Okay, so I've got a couple of windows. Um, over on this side, um, I'm going to use the same technique, but I'm going to create a TV. I'm going to put a bed down over here. Um, that way, you know, like my kids, they can play their video games while laying in bed. Whatever they want to do. Okay. I have an orthogonal right here. Just like this is an orthogonal. They're not the same angle. They would gradually converge upon that vanishing point. Eventually, my vanish point is going to have to go. or be hidden somehow. Now this TV right here, I'm going to give it some depth. Kind of the way I gave depth over here, but this is on the outside. I'm going to draw another vertical right here. Check and compare to the edge of my paper, like I said before. I could also draw the border of this TV. That's going to be an orthogonal. That line right there would actually line back up with my vanishing point, and so would this one. So that border gets a little bit wider here than it is here because it's closer to me. As things get closer to me, they get bigger. As things get, go farther away, they get smaller. That is why the edge of this TV is so much smaller than this TV, this edge of it right here. Okay. I could draw all the stuff on here. I could draw wires down. I'm going to put an outlet on, on the wall that the wires are going to go to down here. That would be in perspective as well. So if I put a little box on the wall... That could become my outlet for my TV. Right here, I can draw my plug in. And there's my cord. This is a smart TV, so it doesn't need any other wires for cable or anything like that. So, I've got the start of a TV, some windows, I've got a tile floor. We're going to start to put a piece of furniture out here, okay? Namely, a bed. In order to do a bed, a bed is basically a box, okay? So, if we're going to do a box, I'm going to show, since the bed is going to be facing that way, the headboard is going to be over here. I'm going to actually see the side of the bed right here. So, to create the side of the bed, this is where the bottom of that bed would be. It's going to go straight up from there. And then I'm going to come right here, go straight across. This is going to be the side of the bed. Now, in this case, because of where the location of the foot is, I'm only going to see the side of the bed and the top of the bed. So this line right here is going to become the, the beginning of the top. This is going to become the other part of the top. And then I have to decide how wide this bed is going to be. So in this case, this bed goes to right about here. I can also put a headboard on here. The top of the headboard is going to go towards my horizon line as well, or my vanishing point, excuse me. Then if I wanted to, I could give this thing some thickness. Give it some legs that go down to the floor. And then I'm going to have to go about erasing the tile floor that's inside that bed so you can better see what I've created. I'm no longer going to be able to see the corner of the room because it's blocked by the bed. Once again, if I have that nice loose grip and I don't draw too dark, it becomes easy to get rid of things that I no longer need. Like parts of the wall or the tile floor. Okay. Now, even things like pillows. There were pillows in here. On this bed. Those pillows would even be in perspective. So if I draw a line right here, kind of make a curled thing right here. I'm going to put a couple pillows on the bed. 
those would actually be in perspective as well. They'd get a little bit smaller as they went farther away. So now I've got a couple of pillows up against the headboard. Once again, I can erase some of the things that I don't need. Redraw back in. And I have the beginning of some pillows. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually draw, get a little bit tricky. I'm going to make the doorway to this room right here. That way I can actually show the hallway that somebody might walk down to enter this room. Okay, so the door, since it's open towards us, is going to be right here. There's the open door. We're going to give the door a little bit of thickness because it's not paper thin. I have to draw or erase this part right here. I'd have to give it a door handle. The plate for the door handle would actually even be in perspective. So that little plate right there, here's the doorknob on this side, here's the doorknob on this side. And then if I wanted to create some more depth, I'm going to get rid of all these orthogonals that I got going on. If I want to give this some more depth, I can start to create the hallway that somebody might walk down to get into this room. So, this becomes the ceiling of that hallway. This becomes one of the walls. This becomes the floor outside of that. We're even going to put a door, a doorway in the hallway. We're going to call this the bathroom. Top of that door would be in perspective, as this would be. I'm, I'm a little bit off on that line. I should have checked with my vanishing point before I drew that orthogonal line at the top. Sometimes you'll realize that you've done something wrong too. And if you haven't drawn too dark, you'll be able to change it. So, we've got our bathroom door. I'm going to give that some depth right there. Kind of like what we did with our windows over here. I'm going to put a doorknob on that too. So now I have a door into this room. I've got a hallway. I've got a door in the hallway. I've got all kinds of stuff going on in here. I could probably even make the kitchen off in the distance, but we're not going to get quite that fancy today. Now, this wall back here, if I was going to put anything on this wall, say a movie poster, because this wall is all vertical and horizontal, anything on this wall would also be vertical and horizontal. Okay? I'm a big Led Zeppelin fan. We should probably put a Led Zeppelin poster on here. So, as you can see, this would be straight verticals and horizontals because it's on the far wall. Now, I'm going to go in, darken up some of my lines that I'm keeping. And as we went farther in this, I would get a lot of shading put in here. I'd probably shade underneath the bed. I might bring some light coming in through the windows, doing all kinds of stuff like that. That's a whole different video because that's all based on value study and shading and things like that. And we're going to keep focused on perspective. Now, I said I was going to create a ceiling fan up here. For the ceiling fan, before I erase this guy right here and try to hide him, um, I'm going to make a ceiling fan up here. We're going to do a four-bladed ceiling fan. I'm going to bring a couple orthogonals off of that. And then I'm going to do a couple of horizontal lines. Because my ceiling is orthogonals and horizontals. Just like this line is, so with this. Now, easy way to make this into a ceiling fan. Once I have this up here, I'm going to make an X between the corners. Those are going to become the blades of my fan. So, as I start to draw that center kind of dome part, my blades are going to come off of that. Now the blades in the back would be shorter because they're farther away. So this is a four bladed fan. I know most have five. This is a quick way to start to understand how to draw something like this in perspective. Um, I could draw it with five, but that complicates it, and this is a little bit more of a beginning level drawing. 
So I've got my ceiling fan up here. I can start to erase some of those extra orthogonals that I have. And the box that was around my ceiling fan before I started it. I'm going to go ahead and erase my vanishing point because I'm not going to need it much longer. Now off of this, I can go ahead and make my chains that come down here. So I can turn that ceiling fan on and off. And I better put a light switch right here too. That would be straight horizontal and vertical because it's on the far wall. Okay. So at this point, we have most of the stuff that we need to have a good basic bedroom. Um, I could do a nightstand over here. I could do some kind of table over here or a dresser that this hides behind. Um, but for right now, I'm going to stop at this point and let other people start to figure out how to do this for themselves. Um, I would love to hear feedback, um, anything that you have to add. Um, if you're another educator, you can always comment or message me, um, and I would love to chat. Have a good day. Try this out. Send me examples. Yeah, it's going to record, and then you're going to be in the video. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay? Okay. What do you know about perspective? I don't know. <laughs> I have failed.